The American Red Cross says there's an emergency shortage of blood for transfusions. In July, the national supply dropped by more than 25 percent. And the Red Cross says the only solution is more blood donors. Jessa Merrill is director of biomedical communications at the Red Cross. Uh, Jessa, how did we get here? What led to this? Sure. Thanks so much for having me here. There are a number of factors that have led us here. Um, for one, uh, the last few months have been extremely hot. So uh, that heat alone, while uh, hasn't just impacted, you know, our ability to enjoy the outdoors, it's actually impacted about 100 blood drives in July alone for the Red Cross. And what I mean by impacted, it means that those blood drives either started late or ended early because the facility in which we were hosting, so that could be your local community organization, church, you name it, that those rooms were too hot. A blood drive needs to be cool for people to have a good experience. Think of like the grocery store, right? When you walk in, um, it's sort of a naturally cool environment. Um, but in addition to that, we've seen really severe weather already in the month of August, right? We've seen remnants from a Hurricane Debbie flood most of the East Coast. We've seen tornadoes throughout the Midwest. Um, and then we've seen wildfires out West. Um, and those disasters and those severe weather impacts have canceled 60 blood drives um, just this month alone. And that has caused about 1,500 blood donations to go uncollected. So in addition to having blood drives either um, you know, start late or end early, uh, we also see that fewer people are out and about, right? They're heeding the cautions that public officials have said. They've said, stay indoors, uh, don't travel if you don't need to, move slow, pick your activities wisely. Um, and so we just sort of see lower blood donor turnout when it's hot. And there is a shelf life for blood, is that right? Absolutely. So blood donations um, can't be stockpiled. They can't be manufactured. They can only come from generous blood donors. Um, and they have to be constantly replenished. If you think about whole blood donation, that's the red bag. Um, generally speaking, those donations have a shelf life of about 42 days. Um, and then we have other products, um, which we call platelets. They're generally yellow um, and mostly transfused to cancer patients. They have a shelf life of just five days. Um, and so they're, they're in critical supply almost always because of that short supply. So we, we need donors all the time, not just when there's a shortage, but especially now because we, we simply don't have enough blood on shelves to keep up with hospital demand. Even putting the, the weather we've seen this summer aside, I read somewhere that the uh, uh, blood donors are at the lowest level in 20 years. Why do you think that is? We've been looking through a lot of our data to sort of understand that trend. Uh, in 2020, we all went remote. We all became hybrid. We all became much more comfortable uh, connecting with the world virtually through our computers. Um, and so some of that makes our ability as the Red Cross uh, to meet you where you are um, to host convenient blood drives challenging, right? Um, we see fewer people going into the office, which was has been a bread and butter um, of hours to be able to reach you conveniently. We see schools with stricter protocols about who can be on campus and trying to keep them safe um, from COVID and other things. Um, and so we're just seeing um, fewer people come out and give um, than ever. A and that that really strains the blood supply. So even when we have small disruptions, right? Hurricane Debbie lasted for a few days, but that small disruption can have really big impacts because we just don't have other people giving the blood. For people who are thinking about giving blood, what are the requirements or, or restrictions on giving blood? And I think particular of the, uh, the changes that have been recently made uh, in uh, dealing with men who have sex with men. Sure. The basic requirements are, are, are not, that, not that robust. Basic requirements is that you have to be at least 17 in most states, weigh 110 pounds, um, and feel healthy and well at the time of donation, right? Those are sort of the bare bones requirements. The other thing I want to encourage people is that a lot of the restrictions around blood donations have changed in recent years. Uh, we have a more inclusive blood um, donation eligibility process. It's based on individual risk factors and not sexual orientation now. Um, individuals who may have thought they're not able to give because they lived overseas um, in European countries uh, due to Med-Cal might 
think that they're not eligible to give. And all of those restrictions have changed in recent years. So we really encourage folks um, to go to redcrossblood.org slash eligibility and they have all the eligibility requirements there and, and really take a, look, a quick look to see if, you're, if you might be eligible now. Jessa Merrill of the American Red Cross, thank you very much. Thank you so much.